Hello viewers and welcome to our series on three dimension geometry. Today we will discuss the shortest distance between two lines. Now if you think of two lines which are intersecting, then the shortest distance is always 0. If two lines are parallel to each other, then the distance which is the shortest distance is the perpendicular distance of a point on one line to the other. So, is there another possibility? We are talking about three dimension. We are talking about lines in space and therefore, there is always a possibility that the two lines are neither intersecting nor parallel. Such lines are called skew lines and we are interested in learning how to find the shortest distance between such lines. Let us take a look at what skew line means. We define two lines to be skew lines if they are non-parallel and non-intersecting. Now suppose we look at again the room where you are sitting, can you identify two lines which are skew, lines which are neither parallel nor intersecting. If you look at the edges of these walls which are in the same color then these lines will be neither parallel nor intersecting and therefore they are the skew lines. Another example in this illustration, if I take a line which is along the railing of the balcony and I take a line along the stick which is lying inclined to the floor resting against a particular wall, then these two lines will also be skew lines. We are interested in finding the line of shortest distance and then the shortest distance. If I have two lines which are skew lines, so use your spatial skills to visualize these lines L1 and L2 as neither parallel nor intersecting. And if you can think of a line which is perpendicular to both L1 and L2, then such a line is called as the line of shortest distance and the distance PQ which is intercepted by the line L1 and L2 on this line of shortest distance is called the shortest distance between the skew lines. We are looking at a relation between two given lines whose vector equations or later Cartesian equations may be given. How do we find the distance which is the shortest distance between these two skew lines. So, to so start with if I take the figure and take the point S and T to be the points which are given with the position vector A1 and A2 and PQ to be the shortest distance. Then the projection of ST along the vector which is defining the line of shortest distance will give me the shortest distance. So, the projection of ST is what I am interested in calculating and for that we first determine what is the vector PQ. Now, vector PQ is a vector which is perpendicular to both L1 and L2. In magnitude it is say d units, the magnitude of shortest distance which we are in search for the direction of PQ will be same as the vector n cap which is known to be perpendicular to both B1 and B2 vector which are defining the two lines. And we know that the cross product of B1 and B2 gives us the direction which is perpendicular to both the vectors B1 and B2. Therefore, the unit vector n cap will be b1 cross b2 divided by magnitude of b1 cross b2. Vector algebra also taught us that if theta is the angle between the vector st and vector pq, then the projection that is pq distance will be same as st cos theta. Cos theta using the dot product comes out to be same as d n cap dot 
a 2 minus a 1 upon d times the distance s t. We know that n cap is b 1 cross b 2 by magnitude b 1 cross b 2. So, if I replace that here, I know how much is cos theta. Therefore, the shortest distance which was given the symbol d is p q defined as a projection s t cos theta. So, if you multiply the above quantity with s t, you get an absolute value of b 1 cross b 2 dot a 2 minus a 1 upon b 1 cross b 2. The absolute sign is considered because the direction of b 1 and b 2 is not known to us. So, you may end up with a negative quantity there in the numerator and that is the formula that we will now be practicing with our next two questions. You also must note that this is one of the very important formula result which is very often tested by CBSE as well. So, you need to be little ready with it at the same time it is an easier relation to know once you have done a practice or two. Let us see what the question says. Find the shortest distance between the lines whose equations are vector r is equal to i cap plus 2 j cap plus 3 k cap plus lambda times i cap minus 3 j cap plus 2 k cap. And the second equation is r vector is equal to 4 i cap plus 5 j cap plus 6 k cap plus mu times 2 i cap plus 3 j cap plus k cap. So, if I relate these two equations with the general form that we had, then I know that the vector a 1 and a 2 are the coordinates of the point that are lying on the line. In this case, the vector a 1 is i cap plus 2 j cap plus 3 k cap, vector b 1 is the vector which defines the direction. So, that is coming as the vector in the equation which is multiplied with lambda. So, that is i cap minus 3 j cap plus 2 k cap. Similarly, we know vector a 2 and vector b 2. What I need in the formula is b 1 cross b 2, I need a 2 minus a 1 vector, I need the dot product of these two and I need the magnitude of b 1 cross b 2. So, it is a very simple straightforward calculation all based on what you must have learned in the vector chapter. So, if I find what is a 2 minus a 1, I would get 3 i cap plus 3 j cap plus 3 k cap. b 1 vector cross b 2 vector is nothing but the calculation of the determinant where the first row is i cap j cap k cap and then you write the components of the vector b 1 in the second row vectors b 2 components goes in the third row. Expand the determinant very carefully an error here can affect the entire calculation. Once you have b 1 cross b 2, then we find the magnitude of b 1 cross b 2, which in this case is simplified root of 171 same as 3 times root 19. So, I think now we are ready to look at what we want, we just need a 2 minus a 1 dot b 1 cross b 2. If you find the dot product, it turns out to be 9 in this case. Right? We are multiplying the components of a 2 minus a 1 and b 1 cross b 2 correspondingly. So, I get minus 9 into 3 plus 3 into 3 plus 9 into 3 results as 9. So, what you have to now do is just plug in the values of each of these in the formula and the shortest distance comes out to be 3 by square root of 19 units. Given an equation in vector form, it was easier to use the formula because everything is easily related. Of course, the same formula can be translated into Cartesians, but it becomes a bit cumbersome. So, I will advise you to look at a Cartesian equation of a line and get the required information by translating the Cartesian into the vector equation and then use the formula of shortest distance as we have done in our earlier question. So, suppose now I show you an example of equations given in Cartesian form and we have to find the shortest distance between them. 
the question here has two lines given as x minus 4 by 1 equal to y plus 1 by 2 equal to z by negative 3 and the second line is x minus 1 by 2 y plus 1 by 4 equal to z minus 2 by negative 5. So, what you all have to do is translate these equations into the vector form. So, we know the known point on the first line was 4 negative 1 0 and therefore, r vector is equal to 4 i cap minus j cap plus lambda times direction ratios of the first line are 1 2 and negative 3. So, it will become i cap plus 2 j cap minus 3 k cap and therefore, the same way second equation translates as r vector is equal to i cap minus j cap plus 2 k cap plus lambda times 2 i cap plus 4 j cap minus 5 k cap. And now, we are ready to find what is a 1, b 1, a 2, b 2 all as required. These vectors can be identified without writing the vector equations as well. So, if you are confident of doing that, go ahead and simplify as required. So, we are ready to find what is a 2 minus a 1, b 1 cross b 2, need the magnitude of b 1 cross b 2, need the dot product of a 2 minus a 1 with b 1 cross b 2 and plug in the values in the shortest distance formula. That gives us in this case, as you can see the numerator turns out to be negative 6. That happens because of the orientation of b 1 cross b 2. Therefore, the absolute value sign is important and it gives us the shortest distance to be same as 6 by root 5 units. Now, we did say that distance between two parallel lines can always be calculated using the point on one of the line and then finding the perpendicular distance of that point from the other line. We did demonstrate this in our previous lesson as well, but can I use what we have just discussed right now in the same manner and see what the shortest distance between two parallel lines be and get a formula which is easy to use. Yes, you can. So, let us just look at the result. If I take two lines which are parallel to each other, then their equations will look like vector r is equal to vector a 1 plus lambda times vector b and r is equal to vector a 2 plus mu times vector b. Note that you have the same vector b in both the equations. And therefore, if I take these two lines now, they are now parallel to the same vector b, s and t are the points with position vectors vector a 1 and vector a 2. So, if I draw perpendicular from t, then the distance t p is the required one. Now, this distance t p can be calculated using again the vector algebra, where we learn that if I take b cross vector s t the b is the vector which is along which the lines are defined. Then b cross vector s t is magnitude of b magnitude of s t sin theta into a unit vector n cap, which is in the plane of the lines l 1 and l 2. Now, this vector s t is known to us as vector a 2 minus vector a 1. Using just trigonometry in the triangle s p t the distance p t is nothing but s t sin theta. So, I need to now use this and replacing in the relation b cross vector s t, I get b cross a 2 minus a 1 is equal to magnitude of the vector b into p t, because vector s t magnitude of vector s t is same as distance s t. So, s t sin theta gets replaced by the distance p t times the unit vector. So, if I just equate the magnitude of the two sides, I will get magnitude of b cross a 2 minus a 1 to be same as magnitude of the vector b into distance p t. And therefore, the shortest distance which was p t distance becomes same as the magnitude of b cross a 2 minus a 1 divided by magnitude of the vector b. 
So, if I have the two lines given to us which are in the same direction, so I know the vector b, I know the vector a 1 and a 2, I can take this formula as a result to find the shortest distance between those two parallel lines. I hope today's lesson has made the task of finding shortest distance between skew lines a bit easier for you. Do take up a few more questions and make sure that you get the hang of it. All the best to all of you. Thank you.